Elizabeth Garber was just a teenager. She went off on what turned out to be the adventure of a lifetime. She has written about it in her new memoir, Sailing at the Edge of Disaster, a memoir of a young woman's daring year. Elizabeth Garber is a writer who lives in Belfast, and she's with us here on 207. Thank you so much for coming in. Good to Thank have you, you here. So when you were 17 years old, in 1971, you went off to spend time on a ship at sea that was, in effect, an ocean school. Now let's just back up a bit here. You grew up in Ohio. How many times had you even seen the ocean before? Once. <laughs> <laughs> when I was five and I got knocked over and twirled in the waves. So uh, the ocean was like this mythical thing that it was like someday I was going to go back and see the ocean. I had no idea I was going to be on a ship on the ocean. The reason that you went in this direction, you and your younger brother, was because your father, who was a very domineering, and emotionally abusive individual thought that this would toughen you both up, right? Absolutely. He wanted to send us to a sail training school that would really get us working hard. Your little brother would be a student who would be taking classes on the ship. What was your role? I was the school librarian and a tutor. I got to tutor Mary Tyler Moore's son, Richie, who was <laughs> quite a troublemaker. <laughs> When you got to the ship, you discovered this magnificent, huge, four-masted sailing vessel. What kind of condition was it in, though? It was a wreck. There was no electricity. There was no running water. There was a hose going into the galley kitchen porthole to, to wash all the dishes and cook for 75 people. It was, um, and there were engine fires every day. It was just a wreck. And then we found out that the rigging was rotten and had to be replaced. The idea that your father had was that this would force you to shape up, and it made you do some things that you had never even contemplated doing before, climbing up into the rigging of these towering masts. I mean, this was challenging stuff. Challenging, terrifying, and without safety equipment. I now, when people go up in the rigging on, on ships like that, they have safety wires. We had no safety equipment. We were, do we were doing so many dangerous things. And you were all, virtually all of you, really young. We were really, yeah, <laughs> 14 to 19 kids. Yeah, really naive kids. Right? What was kind of your emotional state once you got a little bit settled in? Did you like it? Did you hate it? How did you feel? You thought it was so cool. We thought it was exciting and cool that we'd sleep on deck every night and wake up and we would just do what we, you know, we were advised to do, but we were just having a riot we, and we were getting so close to each other. It was really quite extraordinary. As my brother said, yeah, hell, it was dangerous, but I won't want to go home. <laughs> right? Even later, even when it got really bad, we still didn't want to go home. It's, this, it's, a, it's a classic coming of age at sea story Absolutely. in that this didn't just change your adolescence, this changed your life. Absolutely. It made me a different person, a much better person. And it helped, I was, I was a depressed bookworm who um, was shy and reticent. I had never danced before. I had never, um, I was just a fearful person and I learned how to become a lot more brave and I became a writer. I wrote pages and pages in my journal every day. And, um, and I made friends that have been the friends the rest of my life. And you needed that courage because you got into some pretty tight jams on that ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that could, <laughs> that could have been dangerous and potentially fatal. Right, right, absolutely. Um, my husband, when he kept hearing books, stories about the book, he said, I can't believe no one died. And people read it, they go, I can't believe no one died. It was so dangerous. Was it fun to step back in time, bring back the memories of those years, and then put it down on paper? It was, it was really fun. And, and what was really great is I went hunting for my classmates, my shipmates. And there had been 50 kids on the ship. 10 teachers, and then crew members who came and went. But I found 12 of the students, but I found five of the teachers, and I created a private Facebook page. So we, we spent two or three years just sending all these emails back and forth, going, now how did this happen, or what happened then, and sort of getting the stories straight. And then I called and interviewed people, and I heard so many things that I had never known. And that really adds to the dimensions of the story. And then what brings the story full circle is that this sailing ship, the Sea Cloud, later on got spiffed up, renovated, uh, turned into a luxury yacht, and you, a few years ago, went out as a passenger on it, as a guest on it, for a few days. Yes, yes. I, I've, all these people said, you have to go back to the ship to research. And I thought, 
I can't afford to go on it. But I found the shortest trip. My husband and I flew to the Canary Islands. We got on the ship for four days and sailed around the islands. There were trips off to go explore the islands. It was like, no, I want to be on the ship every minute because I wanted to remember what it felt like walking down a deck when on a rolling sea, or what it was like hearing the sounds in a harbor where there's all these sounds, but also the sound, what it's like being when the sails are up and it's just, and the engines are quiet, and it's just so beautiful. It is quite a story. Elizabeth Garber, thank you so much for thank coming in. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Sailing at the Edge of Disaster is the name of the book. We have more information on the book and on Elizabeth Garber, which you'll find in the 207 section of our new Citter Main website and app. Stick around. We will return right after this.